It looks very similar to an ellipse except for you're subtracting these two terms as opposed to with an ellipse you're adding. But they both equal one and they're both written in this fractional form like you see here. Now, these are the two different forms here. And one thing that you'll notice is that, <clears throat> excuse me, is that whichever term comes first, okay? So if the x squared term comes first, it's the positive term, that tells you that the graph is gonna open in the x direction, the horizontal direction, okay? But if the y squared term is positive, that tells you it's gonna open up in the y direction, the y-axis direction, the vertical direction. So that's an important difference. With ellipses, we were concerned with which denominator was larger, right? That told us which was the longer axis. With hyperbolas, we're interested in which one is the positive term. X squared's positive, it opens along the x direction. Y squared term is positive, it opens in the y direction, up and down. And of course, you can shift these graphs, you know, left and right, up and down, and we'll get into that too. But the other thing I wanna show you is, you know, what do these A, B, and C values all represent? Well, the distance from the center to the vertex, these points here are the vertices, okay, that distance we call A. And the distance from the center to the foci, we call that distance C. So very similar to what we talked about in ellipses. And I'll show you what the B represents when we get into the graphing. We're gonna have another equation that we're gonna use uh, for this one, and that's C squared equals A squared plus B squared, just like uh, Pythagorean theorem. And I wanted to show you, you know, just to give you some background, like what a hyperbola actually is. So a hyperbola is a set of all points, okay, that when you take any point on the hyperbola and you measure the distance to one foci minus the distance from that point to the other foci, so PF1 minus PF2, when you take that absolute value, you always get 2A, okay? That's the distance between these two vertices. Okay, so as you go further and further out on this hyperbola, say you take a point here, this distance is gonna get longer, but so is this distance, but the difference is always gonna stay the same. It's gonna be 2A. Okay, you don't need to know that you know, uh, too much to graph these, but just so you understand you know, the background, like what, where the formula comes from, it's based on, on that. But let's show you how to graph these. So x squared over 16 minus y squared over nine equals one. This one is centered at the origin. So let's go ahead and graph this one. So the center is right here at the origin. The x squared is a positive term, that's the important thing. So that tells us it's gonna open in the x-axis direction, left and right. And so I'm gonna go four, see the square root of 16, four to the right. Okay, that's a vertex, and four to the left, that's a vertex. So that's our A distance. Now, in the y direction, I'm gonna go up and down three, the square root of nine is three. That's our B value. Okay, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a dashed or dotted or invisible rectangle here through these points, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the corners of this rectangle to draw our asymptotes. It goes right through the center point and through the corners, so like this, so right through the uh, corners, the center, and the other corner, like that. And those are the asymptotes, and remember what an asymptote is, is it, the graph gets closer and closer to that line, okay, as it goes out like that. Okay, so it's approaching the asymptote. So it gives us an idea about how wide our hyperbola is or how narrow. Okay, same thing for over here on this side. So it's going like this, it's going like this. You want it to get closer and closer. You don't want it to bend away from the asymptote. You want it to approach. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do is we wanna find the coordinates of the foci. So we're gonna use this equation here, c squared equals a squared plus b squared. And in this case, this is a squared, this is b squared. So we have c squared equals a squared plus b squared, these are already squared, so that's 25. Take the square root, we get plus or minus five. Now, the foci are gonna be on the same axis where the vertices are. So if we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, there's our focus, one, two, three, four, five, there's our other focus, okay? The other thing we wanna find are the equations of the asymptotes, these dashed lines that the graph approaches. So how do we do that? Well. This one's gonna be pretty easy because it goes right through the origin. So we're just gonna find the slope. We're gonna use the y equals mx plus b form of a line. The slope is rise three, run four. Okay, and when this one here has a rise of negative three over four, so the slope is gonna be plus or minus three fourths halves x, three fourths, three fourths x plus zero, right? So it's going right through the origin, so the b is zero. So these asymptotes were easy to find, okay? All right, so, so far so good. 
All right, let's take a look at this next example. So this will get a little bit clearer as, as we do it, okay? So this one, the center is at negative one, comma three. The x coordinate of the center is grouped with the x, the y coordinate is grouped with the y, so negative one, three, so that's gonna be negative one, three, that's our center point. The y squared is the positive term. That's important to recognize. So that means it's going to be opening in the y direction, up and down, the vertical direction. I'm going to go up 2. Square root of 4 is 2. And I'm going to go down 2. Okay, so those are our vertices. And I'm going to go right 5 and left 5. So that's in the x direction uh, from the center. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, right about there. I'll just put a little point. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'll just put a little point. Okay, so we're going to draw a rectangle okay through these points okay and then we're going to draw our asymptotes they go through the corners of the rectangle through the center through the other corner okay same thing here through the corner through the center through the other corner like this okay and we know that the y squared is a positive term so it's going to be opening in the y direction so right here i covered up the uh vertices, but they're right there and right there, okay? And so the graph is gonna go like this and like this, okay? It's approaching these asymptotes. Same thing over here, this one's gonna go like this and like this. Okay, the only thing we have to find now are the equations of the asymptotes and the coordinates of the foci. So let's do that. So the for, uh, equation of the asymptotes, okay, let's do the foci first. So we have c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Okay, a squared is this one here, b squared is this one here, so that's gonna be four plus 25. So c equals the square root of 29, plus or minus. Okay, now the foci are on that major axis, okay, where the vertices are located. So from the center, since the center is at negative one comma three, I'm gonna add and subtract square root of 29 from the y coordinate of the center because that controls the vertical direction. So I'm going up square root of 29 and down square root of 29 from that y coordinate of the center, okay? Now the equations of the asymptotes, let's use the point slope form of a line uh, for these. Because we know that the asymptotes are going right through the center point, we're gonna use point slope. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Okay, the slope is rise to run five or rise negative two run five okay so that's going to be plus or minus two fifths x minus okay the x coordinate which is negative one so that's going to be plus one and y minus the y coordinate which is three so that's y minus three now you can write these separately y minus three equals two fifths x plus one and y minus three equals negative two fifths x plus one and then you can distribute and rearrange it and put it into a slope intercept form, the y equals mx plus b form. But I've just left it here like this, just as a condensed way of writing it, but you'll have to see what your teacher prefers and how you